The G20 summit in Toronto, Canada is only days away. And protesters are already flooding to the city, which means that the police aren't very far behind with their barricades. But is the most extreme security in the history of Canada really justified? RT correspondent Lauren Lister is going to bring us this story. Canada is getting ready for a meeting of world leaders to top all others. In security, that is, and it's for two meetings, really. We have 20,000 people working for the uh, security of the both the, the G8 summit in Huntsville and the G20 summit here in Toronto. By people, he means police, security guards, even Air Force, here in Toronto locking down the city days ahead of the G20 summit, causing some to call it a police state and adding to a security bill estimated to be the largest in G8, G20 history, also in the host countries. It is the biggest security operation in Canadian history, so uh, it's bigger than the Olympics that just happened in Vancouver. The biggest, and I bet not even an Olympic athlete could scale this fence, 12 feet high, stretching five kilometers in the city, right now serving as a place for cops to hang their hats, but ultimately... From protesters to prevent them from, from uh, gaining access or, or to the uh, summit site itself. <laughs> But the protesters gathering down the street at a park ahead of the summit. This is the free speech zone. Getting ready to bring their message to the G20. It's a problem of, of global uh, capitalism, global uh, corporatism, global colonization, which is ongoing. Such as these hip hop artists. We're living right now in a police state. Say it's about much more than that. I really think it's just the whole thing is just an effort to militarize Toronto. Illogic believes it's a response to the unrest seen in the global economic crisis. Yeah, People used to the idea that police and um, these crazy measures are, are a normal part of your society, and uh, people are accepting it, and it's really scary. And some Canadians do appear to welcome it. It's good. It makes you feel safe. I think we have very little control over that, so there's no point just complaining about it. But the government doesn't appear to be in control either, of the security budget at least. They're talking around the $300 million mark, uh, but if you put everything together, uh, there, we're, we're approaching the, the $1 billion mark. Maybe the Canadian government made up for some of that money here at the press center, where they were reportedly to have a $2 million fake lake to showcase Canada's beauty. Clearly, I came prepared. Well, in reality, looks like it turned out to be more of a waiting pool. No, it wasn't $2 million. The $2 million was for the whole setup of Experience Canada. Well, maybe not. Uh, the fake lake <laughs> the uh, the pool portion was fifty seven thousand dollars back outside that's about how much money this downtown business owner expects to lose this week as he closes shop because of this in a police state everything going on is scared away all the tenants and the customers and as the leaders get ready to roll in the protesters get ready to hey, rise up rebel before it's too late everyone looks ready the question is are they Lauren Lister RT Toronto Canada All right, well, we've heard about the preparation, but what's actually on the agenda? RT producer Lindsay Garfield is joining me live from Toronto, Canada. Now, Lindsay, you just got in there last night. The, uh, the conference kicks off tomorrow, but, you know, what's the atmosphere like right now? What's it like being there in Toronto? Hey there, Alona. Well, the atmosphere is uh, definitely interesting. It seems like right now they're mostly just police and press. Um, you know, we saw a few protesters in Lauren's story there, but right now the police far outnumber the protesters. They're expecting more tomorrow and through the, west, the rest of the weekend when the summits actually take place. But, you know, we've talked to a lot of uh, uh, native Toronto uh, people from Toronto here and they've said that you know this is kind of like a ghost town they uh, uh, a lot of businesses are shutting down uh, businesses uh, business owners are um, asking their employees or urging them uh, not to come into work because they uh, they're on lockdown especially around the convention center in Toronto where the G20 will be taking place so you know it's a lot of security and uh, a lot of hype surrounding this summit now, we could say in many ways this is uh, an odd situation because we have the G8 and the G20 summits being held really on top of each other and in the exact same place. So, you know, have you spoken to anyone that's given some explanation to that? I mean, is this uh, a symbolic move? Are they trying to fuse the two together? Well, you know, the G8 and the G20 both um, take place once a year. The G20 actually is... Uh, uh, 
has been more than once a year because of the financial crisis. But um, yeah, you know, they're stacking them back to back. It's uh, interesting how they have the G8 with uh, you know the major uh, financial in economic markets, the big countries, the U.S., Russia, the U.K., and then, uh, you know, back-to-back -back you have the smaller countries coming to the G20, and there have been a lot of critics saying, why are they separating them, and, you know, what about the smaller countries? Why can't they participate in the G20? Certainly, uh, countries like China have a, a say in, in what's going on with the economy right now. Yeah, certainly a lot of people have speculated that perhaps the G8 is becoming obsolete because you can't really take into, uh, you can't really discuss global economic matters without taking into account the developing economies. Now, since the G8 is happening, first though, what can you tell us is uh, going to be on the agenda? The G8 is really going to be focusing on uh, lots of foreign affairs issues. Uh, there will be tackling the developing nations, certainly, even though a lot of those nations won't be participating in the G8. They're going to be talking about poverty, hunger, clean water for these countries. And then, of course, they'll be talking about lots of uh, really serious international issues we have. Uh, the Middle East, um, you know, with our, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. They'll be talking about Iran and uh, their nuclear program. That's certainly been a hot topic of debate with uh, the U.N. sanctions um, just recently being imposed on them. And it's been speculated that the G8 summit, all the leaders will just kind of reiterate what um, they've said about the U.N. sanctions, about Iran really cooperating. Um, so those will be uh, some big topics of discussion here at the G8. All right, that was Lindsay Garfield filling us in live from Toronto, Canada. And we'll